Hi everyone and very good evening to all of you. Uh, welcome, welcome to our thematic webinar on studying creative arts and design in the UK. Um, please do sort of come in, settle down. I know you've all had a long day um, in school and college and teaching and working. So um, this is your chance to just kind of sit back and relax and listen uh, to the fantastic panel that we have ready for you today. And I hope you find it useful. We're going to discuss um, opportunities of studying creative arts and design in the UK. Um, it's a field that the UK is actually brilliant in and one of the best in the world. Um, so we hope that you're able to kind of, uh, you know, make the most of that. And we have a panel here from the UK. So, um, you know, you're kind of getting it from the experts. So any questions you have, any concerns you have, not just about studying creative arts and design, but really about studying in the UK, um, even around visas or, uh, you know, the experience of studying and applications, please do feel free to ask us and we promise to answer as many questions as we can. Um, I'm going to quickly introduce, uh, so okay, but before I move on to the panel, um, just to tell you that there is an opportunity for you to ask questions directly to the panel. So there's a Q&A box on your screen. It's a small bubble with the uh, question marks. So if you click on that, uh, please do put your questions in. Um, they can be questions around what you see during the presentations and or questions around studying in the UK in general. What we're going to do is we're going to, we have three um, institutions here from the UK and they're going to present on their courses and their opportunities and we're going to stop in the middle to answer questions. So just keep putting your questions in throughout the presentation and we'll come to them, I promise. Um, so we have, uh, we have a fantastic panel for you really today. We have have the University of Leeds. We have Dr. Caroline Hemingray, who's Director of Admissions and Recruitment and Lecturer in Fashion Marketing and Colour. <laughs> That's amazing. And we have Kasia Ratcliffe, who's International Officer at the University of Leeds. Uh, welcome, Caroline, and welcome, Kasia. Thank you for being here with us. We have um, Institute of Contemporary Music Performance, or ICMP, and we have Ace Kent from there. I think Ace is having a little bit of trouble joining, so he'll be joining us soon. Uh, but Ace is head of industry partnerships and business development. Uh, we also have with us Norwich University of the Arts. We have Alexandra Hill, who's course leader for BA Honours in Fashion Marketing and Business and BA Honours in Fashion Communication and Promotion. And we have Georgina Redbarns, who's International Recruitment Manager at Norwich University of the Arts. Um, welcome, Alexandra. Welcome, Georgina. Um, thank you for being with us today. Um, on that note, I'm going to kick off because we have a lot to get through. You're going to hear from all three institutions and what they have to offer. And it's an opportunity for you to also think about what you want out of your creative arts and design ambitions. And um, do, like I said, do put the questions into the box. On that note, Caroline, I'm going to request you to please share your screen. Uh, we have Caroline is from the University of Leeds. Brilliant, I can see that. Great. Thank you so much um, for the lovely warm welcome. Um, it's such a, a pleasure to be here. So uh, thank you for having me and, and welcome everyone um, to our talk. So um, I'm Dr. Caroline Hemingray. Um, as mentioned, I'm the Director of Admissions and Recruitment in the School of Design. Um, I'm a lecturer in Fashion Marketing and Colour and the Programme Leader for one of our Master's programmes, MA Fashion Enterprise and Society. Um, so I'd like to kick off by just uh, giving you a little overview, really, of, of why Leeds, why the University of Leeds. The University of Leeds is consistently in the top 100 universities in the world. Um, and we're really fortunate that due to the prestige and the quality of the teaching and our graduates, we're the fifth most targeted universe, UK university by graduate recruiters. We're also a really diverse and vibrant university with a fantastic international uh, cohort, uh, with a 35th most international university in the world. And we have about 9,000 international students. Um, we're also third in the UK for student experience, um, you know, as well as learning, um, you know, on your different programmes, you obviously really want to enjoy your time in your studies. Um, and we're really proud that we provide a really vibrant, wonderful student experience for our students. The university itself was established in 1904. It's a Russell Group University. 
Um, and it's one of the largest universities in the UK with over 38,000 students from over 170 countries. We have a really fantastic range of courses at the university, over 300 undergraduate programmes and 200 master's programmes. Now today, obviously, you're joining because you're interested in design. So I'm going to introduce to you some of our undergraduate programmes and postgraduate programmes that we have within the School of Design. To give you a little idea about where we are as a university within the UK, I've got this handy map here. You can see that we're kind of in the middle um, of the country. Um, it's the third largest city in the UK. So as I say, it's a really vibrant city and um, there's a lot going on um, and we've got really great links to um, transport. So we've got Leeds Bradford Airport um, and Manchester Airport not far from us in Manchester and obviously the train lines and so on down to London. We are in Yorkshire. Yorkshire is a wonderful um, county. Uh, we have, we're very lucky in that we've got a very compact city centre and then on our doorstep we have beautiful countryside um, across the, uh, Yorkshire. It's a very student friendly city. So we have the University of Leeds in the city, but there are also other universities in the city which means that there's a lot of students um, around. Um, so everything's really geared up to support students and welcome students within the city itself. It's one of the UK's largest centres for business, legal and financial services. And it's also the centre in the north of England for sports, the arts, theatre, opera and music. This is a nice image just to give you a sense of what our campus looks like. So we are very much a compacted campus. We just have one big campus where everything's within walking distance of, of everything else. You can see here um, right in the middle, um, there's Leeds University Union and our buildings are just opposite that. So really in the heart of the campus. So you can see our lovely campus, it's quite green, which we're, we're very fortunate to have. Um, and then you can see how close it is to the city centre. So it takes you probably about 10, 15 minutes to walk into the centre of Leeds. Um, so the School of Design. So we are very, very lucky um, in the School of Design that we are based in one of the oldest buildings um, of the university. And you can see here, this is the entrance to the School of Design. We're a real interdisciplinary school, bringing together expertise from a range of design and technology specialisms. We've built up a really great reputation for research. Research is something that we embed within all of our teaching. It really underpins our teaching and our learning. We are involved in many research projects. So your lecturers that you uh, may be uh, learning with, they're all very research active. Um, we recently, uh, for example, uh, won a, a very large research grant. Um, it's that's like 5.4 million pound uh, research project called the Future Fashion Factory. Um, so real uh, research and development research project um, working with industry. And it's really fantastic to have that in the school there because that obviously brings a lot of industry connections um, to our, our teaching and our research. We're well recognised within industry. So we have great ties with industry, both through our, our research and also through our teaching and our students. Um, our students, for example, often have great successes at things like Graduate Fashion Week um, or D&AD, which is a, a more of a graphic and design competition. Um, we also have things like um, an industry advisory board. So we have a board of industry experts, which also kind of filter in, support our the way that we teach and um, what we research and um, shaping our, our courses that they're really industry relevant for our students. We're ranked seventh in the UK for art and design um, and whilst we are as you can see in a very beautiful old building we are constantly investing we've recently had a very big um, refurbishment of our facilities so it looks beautifully uh, elegant and uh, traditional on the outside but inside we have state-of-the-art facilities. So in terms of some of our undergraduate programmes, as I mentioned before all of our undergraduate programmes are really led by 
leading research in our particular fields. Um, and we also have a really strong emphasis on helping you to develop industry relevant skills so that you're really finishing your degree um, in the best position to get a job. Um, so we have very much a research led teaching approach with a strong focus on employability and industry. So you'll develop design industry knowledge and transferable skills to prepare you for your career. Here, just I thought it'd be useful if you're not aware of the undergraduate programmes that we offer. I thought I'd list those here. So we've got BA Art and Design, BA Fashion Design Innovation, BA Fashion Marketing, BA Graphic and Communication Design, and BA Sustainable Fashion. So something for everyone, we hope. Um, and you know, if you've got any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to kind of expand on those programmes a bit further in the chat or whatever. Um, but yeah, there are a great range of programmes um, and uh, yeah, employability, research, industry relevant skills and knowledge are all embedded throughout these programmes. It's also worth saying that the uh, as part of these undergraduate programmes, you have the opportunity to do a year in industry. So again, that's a really nice way of you developing yourself uh, making sure that you've got that great experience both academically and in industry to get a job at the end of your degree. In terms of our postgraduate studies, so um, obviously you start off with your undergraduate degree and then you may be interested in continuing your education through a postgraduate um, degree. So here you will develop further your specialist skills and knowledge in the area of design that you're interested in. And again, you'll be taught by staff who are actively uh, researching and experts in their fields. Our postgraduate courses are MA Advertising and Design, MA Design, MA Digital Design Futures, MA Fashion Enterprise and Society, MA Global Fashion Management, and MSC Textile Sustainability and Innovation. And again, you can see that there's a, a great range of programmes there. Um, there are also links on these slides that you can have a look at the course uh, overview in a lot more detail to get a sense of the types of modules um, and content that you will be learning on these different programmes. Um, another thing to, uh, to mention is, again, I've already mentioned that we have a great international um, community within our university and in our school. And we have a great a range of students studying our postgraduate courses and they're really active and engaged in building postgraduate community. Um, for example, we have um, an International School of Design Day um, and some of my students, for example, um, from MA Fashion Enterprise and Society uh, have been involved in that and have really enjoyed it. So there's great opportunities for postgraduate community as well within our school. So I mentioned our excellent facilities. So we have many dedicated laboratories, workshops and studios with industry standard equipment. We've recently been investing in our cloth workers self building with some new laboratories, exhibition areas and student spaces. We also have some great spaces for students to work on their, on their, on their projects, um, collaborate with their um, colleagues. Um, and make use of the space and the equipment that we have. Just to give you a sense of some of the different rooms and, and um, equipment that we have, we have spaces such as the fashion design studio, um, the uh, art and design studio, 3D workshop, digital printing, 3D printing, traditional print. So some really fantastic spaces that you will have the opportunity to work in um, as a student here. So in terms of career support, I mentioned that, you know, as a university, our graduates do very well um, after they finish getting jobs. And I must say we have a fantastic careers team who support our students with this. So really helping the students to transition from their studies into their um, careers. So our expert career staff that we have, the dedicated careers team, support students with looking for jobs, um, internships and opportunities. Often we're able to share jobs with students um, that maybe haven't been advertised externally. You know, many employers contact us directly to advertise jobs to our students. 
Our careers team also offer things like events and workshops. Often these are employer led. They often offer, they also offer guidance in terms of career um, options, drop in services, mock interviews, things like preparing you for assessment centres, helping you with your CV and things like that. And then our dedicated careers portal allows you to book appointments, search for opportunities um, and access those exclusive vacancies um, and get support. So this is the general career support that we offer as a university. But I thought it was also really worth mentioning some of the great support that you have within the School of Design. So I've already mentioned that our teaching and our learnings for the different programmes that students study already equip you with very relevant industry and employability skills. But we also do additional events and workshops with employers and industry experts so you can really get a sense of what industry is looking for and how you might enter those different roles within the industry. Um, we also have a fantastic fashion forum. So this is a, a guest lecture series that we organise every semester where experts from industry come and present to our students about their, their careers um, in the industry and our students have a chance to ask questions and to net network, network with those speakers. Um, recent uh, speakers include uh, the fashion designer Phoebe English, um, this week we had um, the creative director from People Tree. Um, so we have some really fantastic speakers and it's a great opportunity for our students to really learn about the industry. We also have um, a dedicated um, school, school employability officer and they also help with students looking for placements. So I mentioned that at the undergraduate programme level, you have the opportunity to do a year in industry. So we will help you with that. We'll help you look for your placements um, and make sure that you're doing something that fits in with your programme and also your career ambitions. Every student also has an academic personal tutor. So academic personal tutors are there to support you throughout your academic journey, uh, journey um, whether that's supporting you with thinking about your career or perhaps your studies um, or perhaps personal issues that you might want a bit of guidance with. So they're really fantastic support for you and they, as I say, they will also help you when it comes to thinking about what you would like to do as your career and finding the right opportunities. I've also mentioned already we have excellent industry links, so whether that's industry partners through our industry advisory board, whether that's through our research that we do um, working with industry to, to do industry relevant research. And those industry experts feed into our teaching and they also um, feed into special events and networking opportunities for you. We have a great alumni network, you know, a bit of advice for everybody here is, you know, keep in touch with your, your friends from school, your friends from university, um, because networking is so important and it could lead you to a job in the future. So we have a great alumni network where we have students that have graduated come back and share their own journeys with our current students. We also have things such as our degree show. So at the end of your undergraduate degree, for example, and our postgraduate students are doing the same this year, you have the opportunity to showcase your final work. So this is not only a great celebration of your own achievements, um, but it's also a great way for you to share your work um, internationally um, with other people. Um, there's a link here at the bottom of the slide. You can have a look at our online degree show that we did last year. It was online due to the pandemic, so um, it's a great resource for you to have a look at some of the different work from different programmes. So I don't want to take up too much time because I know uh, there's lots of people to talk, um, but thank you so much for listening. It's been uh, great to speak and share a bit about the School of Design. There's some contact details here on this slide. So you know, if you do have any questions that come up after today, please reach out. It's probably best to email um, as the email address is there, um, but you can also connect with us on social media. Thank you.
Thank you, Caroline. Uh, that was excellent. It was very, very comprehensive. I hope everybody found that useful. Um, there are quite a few questions, which um, I think some of them can be answered in the Q&A box, but I do want to bring some of these um, to everyone here. So if I don't know if Ace has been able to join, but if Norwich wants to also come on um, video, but would like to know more about courses such as BFA Digital and its likes where art and design and technology kind of come together for undergraduation studies. Is that something you can talk about, Caroline? Yeah, so these programs here, is that what you're asking? <laughs> like, can you yes. See that? No, yeah. no, your, your uh, presentation is off, but that's fine oh, if you want to so. just... If you want to, OK, those are the ones. Great. Yeah, I think. Um, so, yeah, go on. Yeah, which which programs would you like me to expand on? So I think uh, where BFA digital, though, I mean, basically, I think the question is where can one study sort of art, design and technology together and they all sort of come together in the course? Yeah. It depends, I guess, what, what angle you're looking um, to, to approach this from. You know, if you're really interested in um, in digital, then I'd recommend perhaps something like BA Graphic and Communication Design. Um, but if you're looking at something that's perhaps crosses over between those more traditional kind of techniques like screen printing, for example, mm. um, you know, with the digital, um, then perhaps a more experimental approach, perhaps, then you might be interested in something like art and design. Um, equally, it, you know, if you're interested in the fashion industry and you want to develop those digital kind of marketing and branding skills, then you might be interested in something like BA Fashion Marketing, which is more tailored yeah. towards the fashion industry. Yeah. Um, there's lots of detail. If, if people you. want to have a look at yeah. our website, they can see yeah. the different kind of modules yes. and things that we do. I think it'll be helpful if we can pop in the website um, under the question. I think that'll be great. Um, there are that th there are quite a few more questions. Um, scope of architecture and interior design in the future and how does one sort of build those connections? Um, is that something any any of the universities here, any of the sort of institutions here can answer? Fine, if not, we'll move on. Uh, but there are UK institutions who offer those courses, so do have a look at the Study UK website. Um, is dual degree possible? Um, Georgina has uh, thank, has uh, kindly answered that in the uh, box for Norwich. Um, Caroline, do you want to just respond to that? Is it possible to do a dual degree where one kind of studies um, courses from a different discipline? Or I've got um, Kasha, my colleague. Yeah. Yeah. She might that uh, it is possible in very specific subject areas. So some particularly in our humanities um, mm. areas do have dual degrees. I don't think unless Caroline corrects me, there are necessarily any in the School of Design that cross over. Um, I think it's having a look at the subject area that Goldie wants to study um, and then yeah. seeing universities that might have different combinations. Um, but for the University of Leeds, if we combine courses, that would be listed on our, our course finder. So you'd be yeah. able to find that information if, if the course was available. Brilliant. And I have put the link to the course finder on one of yeah. the questions as well. Yes. OK, great. Yeah. Um, there was a question around what are the requirements for an IB student? Um, Kasia, you've answered that, so thank you. Um, Alexandra or Georgina, would you like to answer that? You're on mute. I'd have to defer to Georgie for that one, but I would just say that some of the questions around career routes and things like that that are coming up, we will cover You'll in the presentation. It? If Perfect. That just, brilliant, that helps. brilliant. Yeah. That does help. Excellent. Thank you so much. Ge Georgina, do you want to quickly answer the bit about the IB student? Uh, I yeah, I, I was frantically it. typing, but not fast enough, so <laughs> <apologies>. <laughs> So um, our IBDP requirement is 27 points across all of our undergraduate programmes. Um, we do offer a four year degree option um, and it's a lower entry requirement for that. So it's uh, 24 points in the IB and we don't have a specific uh, higher level subject that we ask for. Um, it's just the general um, point tariff. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, there's a question. This is interesting. What is the difference between MA, MSc and M, M, Des? I guess that's M Design. 
a master's in design. Is there a difference? Obviously, there is a difference, but how does it sort of matter to the student? Um, I don't know. Caroline, do you think you can answer this one? <laughs> yeah, so um, it's just they're different, they're slightly different um, master's qualifications. So Master of Arts, MA or MSc is Master of Science. So um, yeah, they, they are they are different in terms of, I guess, the expectations of, of what that course will entail. Um, so certainly, you know, our MSc textiles program is perhaps more on the scientific. Um, range of, of programmes compared to our arts masters, which are the MA um, programmes. So yeah, they, they, they are slightly different. It's just the different type of MA or, or, or masters, sorry, I should say, different type of masters programmes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, do you have something on the lines of product design? Um, Norwich, if you do, then we'll probably come to that in a bit, but um, we, leads, yeah. Yeah, we do have product design, um, but it's probably not design in the way okay. um, that they're thinking of it. So it would sit in the School of Mechanical Engineering. Um, so it's more an engineering course okay. rather than a design course. Um, and when looking at engineering courses, they will all have a maths requirement. So a higher level oh, maths um, or standard 12, depend depending on what students are studying. Perfect, thank you. Um, there are some questions around pre-master, so if you do have that, do pop that link into the box. And um, looking at skill sets, looking at, okay, masters in graphic design, I think that these are questions we can hopefully answer in the box. If not, we'll come back to it. I'm keen to get on to um, the next presentation by Norwich School of Arts. So if that's okay, if we'll, I think we'll move on to that and we'll try and answer some more questions in the Q&A box in the meanwhile. Norwich, over to you. Thank you. So um, today I'll be talking to you a little bit about, um, oh, we flipped, apologies. So Norwich University of the Arts. So we are a specialist creative arts university. Um, and I'm going to focus a little bit more specifically on fashion marketing and fashion business. However, just a touch on the fact that as we are a specialist, all our courses are focused within the creative arts arena. But just to pick up on some of the questions that are coming through in the chat, around um, technology and creative coding, please do message us about that because we do have new courses in development, particularly around the technology areas. So um, something to reach out to us as they are in development currently, as well as also having specific courses on UX design um, and games and graphic communication sometimes can touch on these areas. So. Um, I would just suggest reaching out to our international team to really help you find the course that might be best for you. But one of the things we always say about Norwich is that we're big enough to be dynamic, but small enough to know your name. Um, we really are a creative community um, and we are focused on working with you to find your kind of your aspirations and your goals and finding quite a personal route through the creative arts. Uh, as as kindly said, my name is Alex and I'm the course leader for both fashion communication and promotion and fashion marketing and business, which are our two um, courses that focus more on the management and marketing side of fashion here at NUA. We do also have a fashion design and textiles design courses if you are interested in those, but I'm going to focus a little bit more on the fashion arena today. So fashion marketing, sorry, fashion communication and promotion very much focuses on all the areas such as publications, image making, um, film, um, posters, advertorials, um, packaging design. So we're looking essentially at any, any possible way you can communicate about fashion. And that means it's always constantly evolving as well. So we're looking at the moment at a lot of content creation, podcasting and um, viral videos and seeing the ways in which we can communicate our messages clearly. We also have the fashion marketing and business degree, and this focuses more on the entrepreneurial global side of fashion. So looking at fashion marketing, strategic campaigns, buying, visual merchandising, business planning. So really looking in terms of that more strategic business route. 
We have a unique way of delivering the courses here at NUA. So we have a joint first year. So our comm students and our marketing students come together within the first year. And we do that for two really good reasons. One is that there are a number of core crossover subjects that is really important that you get to grips with, regardless of the area of fashion that you may be willing to explore. So as you can see here, fashion history, contextual awareness, branding and promotion, industry awareness and research fundamentals. But the second reason is also to give you the opportunity to really get to know and explore the area of the industry you want to pursue further. And so within that first year, you will try a number of different projects out and it'll help you to realise if that's definitely the route or if you'd like to switch. And as you progress um, within fashion communication and promotion, we look more closely at image, media and film, creative direction and styling and photography, magazines and publications and writing, packaging, asset design and graphics and trend forecasting and the wider world of fashion culture. With fashion marketing and business, we focus more on the international global issues of fashion marketing and strategic business, retail and visual merchandising and store design, buying merchandising and product planning. And we also look at business models, planning and entrepreneurship. So you come together in that first year, you have what we like to consider a safety net and a chance to really embrace your creativity and find the route for you. Across both our courses, industry is at the forefront of everything we're doing. Um, we have a weekly industry guest program on our course. So every single Wednesday, we have an industry guest joining us from a wide variety of um, industry areas and backgrounds and this is just a very small taster of the kind of brands and names that we're working with. Um, stylists who created the Olympic campaign for Adidas, um, leading journalists looking at anti-capitalist fashion. Um, we're looking at people who are working within equality and diversity for leading brands like Louis Vuitton um, and Gucci. Um, people like Danny Sangra who is creating these beautiful illustrations for leading brands like Stella McCartney and um, those people who are creating campaigns for Ivy Park. So across marketing, image making and small businesses through to global brands, every single week we have an industry guest sharing their knowledge and always opening up the floor to questions from you so that you have that chance to communicate um, and create a dialogue with those who are right there on the ground making things happen. Um, we don't do a sandwich or a year out currently, although if opportunities do arise, that is something that we can help to support you with um, by taking a year's intermission. But we do have plenty of opportunities for work experience through a number of independent study weeks and breaks. Um, and these are just some of the types of brands that and companies um, that our students are working with. So um, we had a student who is currently on an internship and mentorship programme with Elle around fashion writing. Um, we've had students go to places like immersive virtual reality, and um, whether it's looking at visual merchandising at Vivian Westwood and Jimmy Choo, or maybe behind the scenes on fashion shoots at The Guardian magazine, there's a really wide range of opportunities that our students have been supported to um, experience. We've only had about three or four years of graduates, so we're still considered quite young. However, we've had exceptionally good success with employability in terms of the types of places our students are going to. Um, and it's so exciting when they come back and they're guests. Um, we've got a graduate returning next week to give a talk, um, working at brands like Netta Porte, Jimmy Choo, Saatchi and Saatchi, Selfridges, Fortnum and Mason, Adidas, and again, all in different roles, all the way from trend forecasting to um, interior space planning, to PR, um, Good Culture, for example, is the brand that brought Skims to the UK. So um, such a broad variety of opportunities. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today was we know that you were really interested in what the opportunities are post university. And I thought I'd just share with you a little bit of the insight of what we're seeing and hearing from our graduates and from our industry guests. Um, 
So we are ensuring that all the time our projects are linked with industry and we're in conversation with them to ensure our project briefs are reflecting what is happening globally. So the kind of project briefs we're doing at the moment are linking to key changes within the industry. So, for example, we're seeing a, um, a need for change that cannot be ignored, that can no longer be a, um, a polite or an extra. It is something that must be core to everything we do within fashion, whether it's tackling racism, sustainability, inclusivity, diversity, transparency. It is no longer OK to just sell something for the sake of selling it. We need to look much more closely at the purpose and impact of everything we do. Um, advances in technology, whether it's CGI models, um, the way we can analyse data, um, really looking at new ways of communication. TikTok is not just a um, Gen Z fad, it is a genuine method of communication, news sharing um, that we must use within our work. And we're seeing a big shift in the way we as people globally are living our shopping habits our lifestyles are affecting what we do why we buy the messages we want to send with the way we dress and more and more consumers are becoming more sophisticated we're more aware we know more and therefore that's affecting what we do um, and so just to briefly touch upon what that we're seeing that means in terms of the possibilities for you when you may graduate from university um, in terms of job roles. So we're seeing some really interesting um, growth areas um, where we're seeing industry asking for students who are able to find these new areas within the market. So I just wanted to share a couple of those with you. One is that we're seeing a rise, particularly within the diversity sector. So a great example here is um, a new type of role we're seeing is global head of diversity, equity and inclusion. And this has really come about through brands needs to tackle head on racism and inherent bias within their brands. So an example here is um, um, Brooke Bob and um, in late July, they, uh, Gucci hired a new position, they hired Renee Tirado and she was hired to head up global diversity, equity and inclusion. And it was the first time in the 98 year history of Gucci. I mean, this did follow a number of cases where they were coming under fire for um, inappropriate um, messaging and design pieces. So we're seeing that no longer can an apology suffice um, positive action needs to be taken through roles like this. We're seeing roles such as consumer psychologists rising as brands become more sophisticated and they're looking for the, how they can differentiate themselves between their competition. Um, they're wanting to understand you and understand their consumer more. Um, an example here is um, um, consumer insight companies who do things like looking at human perception, looking on a neuroscientific level around what it is we want and are needing and demanding from brands so that we can really look at um, creating effective strategies to provide the best possible consumer experience. Sustainability has clearly been on the agenda for a long time, but what we're seeing now is um, post pandemic or semi post pandemic is that again, this can't be ignored. It can't just be a tick box or a, a nice page on a website. We really need to have brands having specific engaged um, members of their team who are critical around environmental issues. Um, so, for example, um, Alvanon are a brand who are looking at being, you know, providing this consultancy to brands like um, um, H and M. Um, so they're looking at focusing on managing over production, consumption, and waste, and really looking at how do we educate brands in order to make more appropriate um, messaging and communications with their audience. And just finally, one more that we've seen really rise and kind of ties into the question earlier about technology is the rise of the need for virtual showroom designers. So throughout the pandemic, we saw um, the kind of closing of being able to 
across globally to visit showrooms to attend fashion weeks and we saw this rise in this need for virtual spaces where people could not just see product but talk and engage in conversation and really explore and sort of play with a product virtually so we're seeing this real shift from online shopping just being static to engaging spaces um so here is an example from june which is a um uh, shoe brand and they created this brand lab space where fashion buyers could go in and pick up the product and explore it and ask the brand questions in this kind of real-time environment and um, so digitally rendered spaces that are um, so much more than just static places and we have shared these um, slides and um, with the team so I'm sure they can um, share with me too but just some top tips in terms of places you might want to look for where the fashion you know the future's going always recommend business of fashion if you haven't signed up to that um, a good note is if you have a college or student email address in any way you usually can access a number of articles for free um, but um, Dazed Fashion is looking at the metaverse and um, we're looking at trends and how they're changing but also if you're looking for something um, easily accessible just to sort of dip your toe in the future of fashion, I would really recommend the Business of Fashion's YouTube series. And they've done a series of shorts that is related to their yearly annual report that they do in um, collaboration with McKinsey around the state of fashion. And that came out just in January, so it's really up to date. Um, and they will take you through the kind of, I think it's 12 key things that are happening over the next 12 months within fashion. Um, but lots of different areas for you to look at and explore. Um, and just to sort of highlight, please do follow us on Instagram. So NUA Fashion Comms, we share daily our students work. So we get our students to really interact with us and share us all their work in progress. If you head to our stories every single day, you'll see exactly what our students are doing in the studios and out on you know, fashion shoots and out in industry. And also, of course, if you have any wider questions, I really do encourage you to chat with Georgie and our international team because we do have not only a wide range of courses from graphics and fine art and film and acting um, and interior design and architecture and all the fashion courses too, but we do have a new range of courses um, coming on soon more around the digital space that you, you may be interested in so it's always best to chat through um what you're interested in and where your passion may lie thank you thank you alexandra that was amazing and again and very comprehensive so i hope everybody found that useful um i'm going to quickly go to questions. I'm conscious of time and we have quite a few questions, although I mean the panel has been brilliant. They've answered pretty much everything <laughs> in the q and box. Um, but there's a question and I request um, Caroline to come on camera as well. Um, there are there, OK, so what if you're not from a kind of a arts fashion background? If you're from there's a question here around from someone who's from a commerce background. Um, do you, I mean, what are the requirements? What do you need in terms of your background? Is it sort of, is it a deal breaker if you're from commerce or science or is it okay? Um, I'll I'll, 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 yeah, I'll quickly go first. Um, for us, particularly around the fashion business space, it's much more about your interest and where you want to be going. So um, we're looking less for a portfolio that is exactly already doing what your the degree will be because we know that you will come from a range of backgrounds, a range of courses. So we're looking more for you to meet the entry requirements, as Georgie spoke about earlier. Um, but then we're looking for a hunger, a passion, somebody who's excited to explore and research an area. And I would say particularly across our two fashion business and marketing courses, we have students who studied um, philosophy and we have students who studied science and students who studied fine art. So I, would, I wouldn't be worried about that. It's more a place to come together and share that experience and go forwards. Brilliant, thank you. Carolyn, if you want to add anything to that, I'll go to the next one. Um, 
there's a question on, okay, hold on. Are there any courses in arts and design for business? I think we did mention them in the presentations a bit, but if anybody wants to go on that, Car Carolyn, if you want to start and then I'll, I'll go to Alexandra Norwich. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if the question is undergraduate or a postgraduate, but um, you know, programmes like fashion marketing, obviously they bring in some relevant business uh, subjects um, and marketing principles. Yeah. Programmes that we've got for our postgraduate programmes, we have, um, for example, MA Fashion Enterprise and Society, MA Global Fashion Management, um, advertising and design they all have they're all actually combined um, they have combined teaching from both the school of design and also from our Leeds University Business School so you know you're actually getting yeah experts kind of tutoring and modules and um, from both the school of design and the business school so yes certainly our, our postgraduate programs um you know Brilliant. marketing and, and business are very much embedded within those programs thank you Norwich, is there anything? Yeah, I would just say that's definitely our fashion and um, business program. That's that's the whole purpose for its existence, really, is for those students who um, are maybe we would call creative thinkers, creative strategists. And within our business course, we cover everything from business planning and the legal side and strategy as well as the creative side. So a good way to bring the two together. I think there's a related question around communication. So what are the communication design media sort of film related question, just as that was just as we mentioned about business? Um, yes, Kasia, go on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have courses. Um, we do have a school of um, media and communication. So we do have courses um, that sit within that at undergraduate and postgraduate um, level. So I can put a link through to those. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Send it on. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Go under <laughs> Georgina. Yeah. OK, great. So we get those links in. Keep a lookout for that in the Q&A box. Um, here's a question on what, what are the requirements for a master's in the UK in the animation field apart from a portfolio? So apart from a portfolio, what are you looking for? Not just necessarily for animation, but everything else as well. I think does yes. <laughs> <laughs> Georgina, think, why don't you go first? Yeah. Um, well, for un for undergraduate, um, the majority of courses will ask for a portfolio, um, and I've given a link to um, I, I put in a little bit about where you can find that portfolio advice because it will vary depending on the course and the university, of course. Um, but as a kind of general kind of top tip for undergraduate, it's it's really important that students don't just focus on showing a university the final outcome um, and that they're not afraid to show us uh, how they got to that outcome. Um, so your creative process is really important. Um, and for postgraduate, um, again, we we ask for a portfolio actually for all of ours because ours are mainly practice based uh, uh, master's programmes. Um, and we also ask students to have a proposal of where they want to go with their master's uh, study so that we can build um, the right support for them when they're here. Um, I hope that's Brilliant. helpful. Thank you so much and Ace, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I know you've had some technical issues, but we're really, really happy to have you here with us finally. I have, I've been restarting and restarting. <laughs> <It's five minutes. laughs> I think that's great. And let's go to your presentation straight away. Um, I'm requesting um, the other panelists to please try to answer as many questions as you can in the Q&A box. There are some great questions coming in. Uh, but Ace, let's, uh, let's go to your presentation now. Great. OK, thank you. Um, sorry so much for, for that. It's been quite flustering for me. Uh, but, um, so my name is Ace. Um, I'm head of industry partnerships and business development here at ICMP. Um, I have got a, a, a big kind of presentation for you because I know a lot of people will want to go to the web and digest it a bit more there. I just wanted to talk to everybody and just tell everyone what we're all about. So um, there's never a dull moment here at ICMP. 
Uh, let's talk about London first, okay? So we're located in the beating heart of London, which is one of the main music capitals of the world. It's, we're 20 minutes from the center, okay? Um, the global music industry is here, including many major companies, independent labels as well. You'll see them everywhere if you go into town. Um, it's also uh, the home to hundreds of live venues. So from grassroots venues right to credible world famous places such as the O2 and Wembley Stadium. You probably heard of all these kind of places. Um, it's populated with really uh, a lot of world famous classic recording studios as well, such as Abbey Road, Metropolis, Air Studios. So we really are the epicenter of, of music, you know, in, in the country, I would say, um, as well as this lot of opportunity. So like the world famous BBC is based here with its radio stations, as well as the Maida Vale Centre as well for the artist recording sessions. Um, you know, they have some fantastic stuff going there. And um, collaboration collaboration is really king here. So um, your, your network is like your net worth. It's the people you meet and the people you connect with around you. It's your power base. So if you want a career in the creative and music industries, it's a very important place to be in London, I would say. And to study here is, you know, you're right in the centre of it. OK, um, with ICMP, we're, we're, we're quite diverse. We're totally supportive and we encourage diversity and inclusivity across our whole campus and our student base. Um, and, you know, you, you can see our students are like the living representation of this, you know, when you come in and if you come and look around or if you just have a look online. Um, in London, you're surrounded by creativity wherever you are. It's an amazing place. I live here. I, I operate out of here. I'm in a band as well. And everything I do is centered around this, this town. Um, so we're also part of the creative growing economy that feeds Europe and the rest of the world, as you probably know. And we've got some great things happening. For instance, the new design district at the O2 Peninsula is going to be a really powerful base for world connections. Um, we've got a, like a kind of um, an offer there, like a um, it's a, it's called an ACE Accelerator, where students can win a year of free office space in the centre of the design um, district, which is really really good. Um, ICMP students as well. We're really collaborative, right? So we're surrounded by lots of other universities. And we've got lots of possibilities to connect them um, for collaborations such as like the Met Film School and people like that. Um, I know I'm, I've got a lot to pack in. I'm going to get there. OK, social life here is amazing. OK, so there's no denying that the social life of London is really vibrant. It's varied. It's diverse. It's super exciting. There's always something to do. There's always somewhere to go. And I, I can vouch for that a lot. Um, and uh, you can connect your studies and your career while you're still at college, you know. So you can start going out there, doing events, playing shows and things like that while you're still studying. So building your career before you leave the college, OK? It starts from the day you walk in here, really. Um, we're on the main map here for the world tours. A lot of artists and your favourite artists probably uh, play here. You probably hear a lot of them playing London shows. Um, London is also, as I mentioned before, it's a real city of opportunity because all the major record companies are here as well. So and a lot of the European press come in as well to do um, interviews with bands and film them and, and promotion, things like that. So a lot to tap into. OK, um, our college. So our college ICMP It's is uh, I'll, I'll explain a few different courses we do in the moment, but we've got two campuses. They're 10 minutes walk from each other. Um, uh, the strong points of the uh, college and the advantages are our tutors are all dual professionals, um, which means they're still active in the industry, which makes them relevant and a really great source of inspiration, uh, as well as they, there's valid mentorship to navigate the music business and the creative arts as it is presently. So, you know, it's right up, bang up to date, which is really good. And they're also super nice. So if you meet them in a corridor somewhere, they're always there to give advice as well as mentorship sessions and obviously the lessons. OK, um, we bring in loads of industry practitioners and successful artists for workshops, masterclasses uh, on campus and online as well. So people like the guy from Motorhead was in the other day. We had Sylvia Massey who produced Tool and Johnny Cash. Um, we had uh, Dan Moyler, who was uh, the engineer for Dua Lipa on her new record. He got a Grammy for that. So we get these people in all of the time. In fact, I even booked someone this morning. OK, um, 
So you're going to get that kind of access and excitement as well around your your studies. And we also embed into the curriculum industry as a as a you know a major part of what we do. So in your classes, you'll also get guests that come in as well as these external kind of inspirational guests. Um, we've uh, we've got lots of extracurricular activities. Um, students get to walk their talk. They have opportunities such as gigs, showcases, events, competitions, business seminars as well. We've got a fantastic careers hub, which creates bespoke plans and mentorship for all of our students um, while they're here, um, as well as internships, face-to-face -face sessions. We get them on festivals, panels, seminars, placements, things like that. Um, and we also have a, an accelerator fund, which helps our students with pre projects they're working on as well. OK, so that's inbuilt into the thing. You can see those people all the time that's in the college. So we help to create your career, as I said. Um, what we do, we offer a wide range of courses across lots of disciplines, but mainly things like guitar, bass, vocals, drums and other instruments. Of course, we have studio production. We have electronic music production, digital marketing, business and entrepreneurship as well. And they range from a high diploma or cert HE to a three year BA honours or postgraduate masters okay so all of that's on the website for people to digest okay um, you can book a virtual open day you can have an online audition or you can have a face-to-face -face audition however you want to do it our admission staff are lovely they're really helpful they'll assist you any way um, you need to do uh, we've also got some great alumni as well so if i want to just shout about a couple of them fraser t smith um, Ed O'Brien from Radiohead, Kathy Dennis, famous songwriter, Sandy Beals, One Direction Band, Ben from The Script, Arnie from The Vaccine, Matty Brown from Stormy's Band. We have a lot of impressive ones, but we also have our alumni working across the whole industry, which is really, really fantastic to see them when you go from anywhere from a record label to a booking agency to a recording studio to a major artist. OK, um, the last thing I want to kind of finish up on, which is really important, is something that I do. We're supported by a lot of major brands um, throughout the industry, right? And it's it's not only through, you know, when you look around the place and you walk through, you see all this amazing equipment, SSL desks and Audi and, and all these kind of Adam speakers. It's fantastic gear, right? But we also interact with these companies for other activities. So they're built into our curriculum as well. So we have internships, we have placements industry panels, masterclasses, competitions, gear discounts, experience events, all of these things tie in with our, our partners, which also helps to formulate parts of your career as a professional musician or business person. OK, uh, and then really, I mean, the, the, the kind of thing to end on really is saying when you're studying at ICMP, we allow you access to all of our equipment and our facilities store. So if you need something, you tap your card, you borrow it, guitars, pedals, amps, all these type of things. It's all free. But when there's no teaching in the rooms, you can book them out. So we're open from nine till 11 weekdays and 10 till 10 on weekends. So anytime that's not being taught in a rehearsal room, studio, production room, anything, students hire this out for free and they work on their own projects and they do their recordings and there's collaboration between everyone. It's a real power base of like a microcosm of the music industry. And, um, you know, we've got a really good collaborative support network between the tutors and the students. We encourage learning by doing. And, um, you know, as I said, we, we also provide the, the rehearsal rooms, the live spaces seven days a week for people to, um, to get involved. And apart from that, it's a lot of fun as well. I mean, I'm here and I absolutely love it. Thank you so much. Is that was fantastic. I mean, you've pretty much covered it all um, in, I think, less than 10 minutes. Well done. Um, I hope that was really useful for everybody. I know we're almost out of time, but there are just a couple more questions I wanted to get into. Um, so if everybody which just wants to come back on camera, please. Um, is how does one apply to your institution? Is it through UCAS? Is it directly? Do you want to just quickly tell people that? Yeah, yeah, you, you can apply directly. So you just go to the website and you look at the admissions page. We've got all of the stuff about the international visas on there as well. We've got people that help you with that. So you can apply directly. They'll tell you what you need. They can call you up and they'll sort it all out. Very, very simple. Brilliant. Um, there is a question here that's not been answered. So I don't think uh, your this question around art direction and masters, I don't think that'll is that something anybody offers here? Otherwise, there will be UK courses in it with other institutions. 
OK, that's a no, but that's fine. Just go on the study UK website. There will be other institutions who offer that. Um, there are some questions around uh, postgraduate in art history. Is there any doctoral programs? Thank you for answering that. But yes, I'll just ask you one more question. Are you looking for a background in something specific or do students typically come from various backgrounds and is that OK? I mean, what are you looking for really in terms of what they've studied previously, what they've done before? be any background but they must have some kind of um, knowledge obviously of, of the subject they're going to take because yeah. we would put someone and put them into hot water and you they struggle with it so with they would do an audition right and as many and also they may audition for one thing and we could advise them whether they would enjoy something else instead yeah if that was more to their skill set where their career wanted to go so we're very flexible but i would if you're going to go for a musical degree you know you are going to need some kind of musical theory knowledge behind you to get through the audition but we can help people with that as well so if they're not quite up to the right standard we'll put them in the right direction to take them up to bump them up to get them to where they need to be Excellent, thank you. I'm just going to ask one last question to everybody. Thank you to all the students for your questions. They were really interesting. Um, OK, for Norwich and Leeds, I mean, Goldie, do you want to just quickly expand on your question? Is it about the kind of background that Norwich and Leeds is looking for? Is it something else? Just um, quickly put that in, please. Uh, but let's just go quickly around the table and ask about um, when is the right time to apply for undergraduate and postgraduate and how should students go about it? So uh, let's start with Leeds. Um, I'm happy to take this one as a broader sense. So it is slightly complicated. So I've put in the chat. Um, so for undergraduate, we would only accept applications through UCAS. Um, international students can apply after the UCAS deadline and um, some of our courses um, will fill up in that time so I'd recommend students applying as soon as they can. Um, on to postgraduate, um, Caroline can correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think any of the um, courses in the School of Design at postgraduate have staged admissions but some of our other courses do and I think for any students that are here um, a lot of the information is on the course page. So if you're looking at a particular course, you can see deadlines to apply by, particularly for postgraduate. And if it's in staged admissions, it has different deadlines, which I won't go into detail of because we haven't got long left. So look yeah. on the course pages for those. Yeah, I, I, I just add, we, um, we, we, we do have a staged admissions now in the School of Design. So yeah. there'll be set dates that you can apply um, for the okay. course. Um, and we'll try and get back to you by a date that's given. But um, yeah, it's best to look on the, on the website for the exact dates. Thank you, Caroline. Um, let's move on to um, Norwich for your dates and ways to apply. So um, we tend to also follow the UCAS deadlines for undergraduates. So usually we ask students to um, submit their UCAS application by the end of January but we do still take applications throughout the year. So we'll continue accepting undergraduate applications right the way through until the summer. Um, but if you are applying for a scholarship, we very much recommend that you get your application in really um, very soon if you're thinking of coming um, this September, um, because we tend to do most of our portfolio assessments right now. Um, and for postgraduate, we are pretty flexible, so we don't have a set admissions deadline and um, we'll keep accepting applications again right the way through until the summer. But again, we do offer um, postgraduate um, scholarships. We have a number specifically for Indian applicants this year, so I'd recommend um, making your postgraduate application really by May. Very useful, thank you. Ace, over to you. Um, Anyone could apply any time, actually. Um, we okay. obviously our intake is in September, but you can actually apply at any time. And then if there's any um, things that differ on it, the admissions team will come straight back to you and get all those things over to you. So if there's any UCAS um, requirements or anything like that. So yeah, you can just go onto the website, have a look what you like, send a letter to us, and we will <laughs> uh, sort out an audition with you. Excellent. Um, there is one last question. What is the equivalent UK requirement from India to join a fine arts master's degree? Georg Georgina, do you want to just answer it instead of typing it in then? 
Um, yep, yeah, so there's an India page on our website where you can check this, but it's around 60 to 65% um, in your undergraduate degree is yeah, roughly right. equivalent to what we're looking for. Great, um, thank you. Yes, Kasia. Yeah, uh, so similar, so we were looking for kind of a first class. Um, we do know that lots of the institutions in India calculate their GPAs and percentages and everything slightly differently. Yeah. Um, so we don't have like the exact details um, available, but we can they can contact our South Asia team who will let them know kind of the exact requirement for their institution. Excellent. Um, OK, great. I think uh, we're almost we're we're out of time for sure. We've gone over, so thank you all for staying with us. Um, I just want to make a quick um, comment here that after this session, all the students attending will receive an email from us uh, with uh, with a recording of the video, with the presentations, as well as contact details. So you can pick up the conversation with the panel whenever you want to um, and just kind of figure out, you know, what you want to do for your own situation and, you know, what the context is and how you should apply and what you need to do. Um, so I hope that's useful. So do wait for that email and I hope you continue the conversation beyond this webinar. I want to thank the panel for taking the time to answer all the questions so patiently um, and for the fantastic presentations for really offering the best that the UK has to offer. Thank you so much for joining us today and thank you to the students after a long hard day you've joined us and you've you know asked all these brilliant questions and you've sat and listened so thank you so much for doing that i hope you all have a fantastic weekend thank you again bye everyone thank you